Does it seem strange to you? It is, we are, and... First one to call When your back's to the wall They're all lawyers and partners and friends This is great stuff. They seem so surprised Media whore. When the public surmised That something was terribly wrong In the dark Georgia night If you listen just right You can hear a couple singing this song Oh, we got friends in high places Ramsey singing along the work of Don Reggae, Peter Boyles, and Media Horror Productions presents the best of the Ramses. Good morning, everyone. It's a Monday, January 28th, 2013. I'm Peter Boyles. Glad you're all here. KHOW Weather Center weather. Big story, and I got home yesterday. I was on vacation to read in with anger that John Benet Ramsey Grand Jury voted to indict the parents, John and Patsy Ramsey, in 1999, but the DA refused. Ladies and gentlemen, please say good morning and welcome back. We became such close friends through this and traveled together on this story. Carol McKinley, who left, uh, that, Lynn left Clear Channel and KOA and went to Fox and now, now lectures on the tour and does neat things on her own and is married and happy. And that's just all good stuff because she went through some. And the kids so, are grown. Yeah. Dogs. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Peter. Good morning to you. Um, how did you react yesterday when you, after all the work that you put into this and the threats that were made and everything that happened, to find out that that grand jury voted? Well, I, um, I guess I wasn't surprised. I mean, I felt like, you know, we were out there every day at that grand jury. What was that, 1999? Yeah. And I used to watch their faces, and, and you know, they would come out after a day of testimony, and they were very disturbed. You know, they, they sometimes would try to look at us, the reporters, that is, you know, and it seemed like they were trying to say something. I, I always felt like there were one or two of them who really wanted to say something. Yeah. And I, I always felt like those people had a conscience. And so it didn't surprise me. And, um, I mean, I didn't know exactly what happened, but, but it didn't surprise me because I'll never forget the day Alex Hunter made his announcement that he was he was not going to indict. I remember I, he was over there at the Justice Center mm -hmm. in the park. I, the I remember it so well. Lot. Remember that? So well. I looked up, and looking out over him were the lead detectives, the mm -hmm. three cops, Tom Trujillo, Tom mm -hmm. Wickman, and uh, Jane Harmer, who'd done so much hard work on this. And they they were watching him, and they were so mad. They were watching him from above, from one of the offices from above. I mean, they, I heard there was a bunch of yelling and screaming when that decision came down because so many people felt like he should have done something. I remember. They had enough. Yeah. I, I remember the contacts that we both had on the inside who cried. Yeah, yeah, there were a couple. But, the, you know, on the other hand, there there were people who felt he was a hero and that he uh, really didn't have enough. I mean, talked to Bob Grant yesterday. Remember Bob? Sure, of course. And Bob said, you know, he really, he really didn't have enough to prosecute, and it would have been a night, it would have been a complete nightmare. And then the DNA came later. If the DNA would have come into that trial, it might have been, you know, a mess. Well, what's interesting to so, me is if if Lady Justice wears a blindfold, and you can put all evidence in one scale and all evidence in the other scale, the weight that the Ramses killed that little girl would have sunk that scale to the bottom so quick, anything you could have put on the opposite plate would have, e would have never even lifted that plate off the ground. I'm not sure, Peter. I, I mean, the handwriting, I, I thought the note was the best thing they had. And, well, of course, the fibers were good, too. There were so many fibers on the underside of that duct mm -hmm. tape from Patsy Ramsey's jacket. That of she course. Wore but, I mean, a lot of those things, you had Hal Haddon, one of the best lawyers in the country, criminal lawyers, ready to go at Alex You know, but Hunter so what? To, you take, take, take the chance. In other words, the hell with Hal Haddon. I've seen Hal Haddon in action before. The hell with Hal Haddon. The hell with whoever they were going to bring in. You had to take that chance. And he chickened out. I think he'd had enough. He had blown it in the in the in the media. 
I mean, remember, remember the guy that used to come into how used to come into, um, into Alex Hunter's office every day and sit and have conversations with him. Jeff Shapiro. Jeff Shapiro. He worked for us. Worked for a. Uh, uh, worked for so, a supermarket so tabloid. So, well, I mean, I was I was trying to remember. Wasn't there weren't there reports? And I think the Ramseys even wrote it in their book that they were in Boulder waiting to be arrested. They were there praying in front of the television, holding hands. That, I think, but that's what they. What what, what, do you remember a witness to any of that? Because I don't. No, no, I think they wrote it in their book. They um, lied in that book so many times. Uh, well, I mean, they might have been in Boulder. I mean, they might have been waiting for, for them to come get them, not knowing what was going to happen. Well, if I was them, I'd be waiting, too. But I don't think I'd be in the, I'd, and I'd be on my hands and knees in front of the TV saying, please, Jesus, don't <laughs> let them grab me. But that didn't mean that they were anything else but. I, I, I mean, talk, I, I, I talked to Bill Wise yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Alex has been sick. He's had I know. cancer, I know. and but he's doing better, from what I understand. Um, I thought Charlie Brennan. Kudos to Charlie. Indeed, I that was a great article. Who, who do you think leaked it? Oh, I think I think Charlie was talking to a lot of people over months because mm-hmm. um, I believe he had this maybe months ago, maybe mm-hmm. before December. He'd be able to tell you that, but um. I don't think it was one leak. I think it was a bunch of people he talked to over the over mm-hmm. the the months. I mean, I, I think he probably got a little inkling here and a little inkling there. And I mm-hmm. probably I, the one thing I wish is that one of the grand jurors would have just gone on the record because they didn't allow him to use their names. And um, one thing Bill Wise told me yesterday is everybody's really spooked because of that rogue um, the rogue Rocky Flats grand jury. Well, that was that was the that grand jury. And that that's a tribute to Patty Calhoun and those people that they yeah, she did a great job. She did a wonderful job. And and they had a couple of those guys that sprung out of that grand jury and said, no, we're going to talk. And but to mm-hmm. this day, they haven't spoken all they, mm. I mean, they, they really haven't. And, yeah. it, and, and because you go to prison for that. Well, I, th- I think that's what, what they're afraid of, but I'm so glad someone, you know, I talked to someone from, from, inside the Denver DA's office mm-hmm. last night who said, it's about time. I can't believe it took this long for I, someone to finally do this story. I agree. And it is about time. I think it's time to blow this thing open. Let's just start talking about it, you know? What do you think Stan Garnett's going to do? Well, what can he do? I don't know. Um, I mean, if what this one piece He knows is, what happened. He knows oh, of course he. Of course he does. I mean, so I... You're saying that this changes what Stan Garnett's job well, is now? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, one of the things I it was that uh, I spoke off air with... Uh, Craig Silverman, and Craig said that, that now, now what is that? Hmm. Does this fall? Cause, you know, John, John's still alive. I mean, Patsy's dead, but as I said before, well, Burke, the, is, Burke is still alive. Yeah, but Burke's innocent. Burke didn't do anything. I know that that book's out there, but Burke Ramsey didn't do anything. Um, he knows something. I agree to that. I agree he knows a lot. I agree that he was awake before he was awake. I agree that. You know that he, when he comes downstairs and he sees all these people and his mother and is crying and he doesn't ask a he doesn't ask a question doesn't ask where well, his sister well, is. Well, one thing one thing Jim Kohler wanted to do with that book, the one we talked yeah. about um, a couple months ago, I guess it was in June. Um, he wanted to get some of Patsy Ramsey's medical records. He mm-hmm. felt like it was time to get that stuff, and he wanted to get Burke's, I think, psychiatric records. Um, so, so there are some things that Stan Garnett could go after. I, I think I, I think what Stan Garnett needs to do is reconvene that grand jury. Well, that would be very interesting. I, don't, I really, you know, that's a that's a great thought. I, hmm. I don't know how feasible that is, unless he feels like he has something else that he needs to get that would lead to the, you know, to solve this crime. And I have been told by a very reliable source, there's one more bit of information. Really? No, yep, one more. And here's the interesting. And what is it, Peter? Well, Come on. No, I. <laughs> You know, but here's here's me here here's the other one. Yeah, as you know, Paula Woodward's been writing a book. You any comment on that? I you know. Have you heard that? Yeah, yeah, I've heard she's writing a book. Yeah, I wonder yeah, what, I uh, heard Debbie Sherman, who used to be over there at Channel Nine, might be helping her out with it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So what? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know I spoke with Bill Owens about six months ago about that book. Mm-hmm. And I've spoken with some other people that Paula's going to write a book condemning, you know, everybody, all of us, and Bill Owens and everybody connected to it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, big time. Well, 
Um, listen, if she if she tries that, good luck because uh, we all watched her too. Oh, believe me when good I luck. tell you right now. When, um, when, if she I, tries one thing, good luck. Yeah, you know. Um, I remember I, I went to a press conference. Gosh, it must have been about two years ago. Um, it was with, with Jackie Dilson, mm-hmm. whose boyfriend was Chris Wolf, sure. who was really looked like a suspect for a little while there. Who looked like he, he was a little suspicious. That was the one I always ended up in court because. Yeah, that ended up in court. But <laughs> no. um, I remember I, I wrote letters to Chris Wolf. He mm-hmm. was writing letters to no. me, and I was writing him back. And we were trying to figure out whether he had anything to do with this and. Um, he had some strange behavior, so I actually brought Chris Wolf to Alex Hunter, mm-hmm. and I said, "Look, this guy might be suspicious. You might want to take a look at it." And here's his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So anyway, now, I remember when Paula Chris- Woodward came up to me at that press conference and said, uh, "Did you sleep with Chris Wolf?" <laughs> of all because people to ask Jackie that question, came out with the letters, and <laughs> I I was floored. I, I thought, but, uh, but of all people in the okay. universe to ask if someone slept with someone well, would I, be I just Paula. Thought, Come on, We're, that came out of left field, and no, but she kind of gave me a smile and walked away. I'll never forgive her for that, and if she tries anything in that book, she'll well, be sorry. Here, here's what I want to say. For anybody to ask questions about how someone sleeps with someone to get a story, yeah, that Paul, was, Paula's got to be the last. Line. All I know is this much. Paula's got to be the last person on earth to ask that question. Well, Paula, listen, let's give her, Paula is a very, very good reporter, I'm, I'm, and the book's probably going to be very good. I doubt I tell you, if her publisher publishes that book now, well, we will see. I mean, I, like I said, when Owens told me, when Bill Owens called me and said the book was coming, I said, I will be the first in line to invite her on the show. Good. And, and well, maybe she'll go. If she has you want to take a she'll go on the show. You, you Listen, take, you Paula's wanna... a very confident woman. No, she's She can not. hold her own with you. She'll be fine. She can't, and she won't. <laughs> okay? Just you saying. Know, um, you, I mean, do you really think that that, I mean, I, I don't know how... Well, now, when this story drops, that the grand jury voted to indict the parents, how she can go ahead with a book? Well, the one thing, I mean, Paula believes the Ramseys, Ramseys are innocent. Oh, absolutely. A lot of people do. A lot of people disagree with you, Peter, and they're out there listening right now. Fine. And they have their reasons for it. What? Well, how can um, you, how in so God's she has, name? She has a right to do this. I mean, well, there, there's, there's not one time I ever said she didn't have a right to write a book. In I, fact, no, I hope she does. And it'll be interesting. I hope she does because there's a lot of people that will have a lot of a lot of things to say when that book gets if if that book gets published. But if I'm a publishing house right now, unless this is one of those um, what do you want to call it? One of these vanishing van, published type yeah, of the vanity books, yeah. That uh, she's not they're they're going to go pff, rip that up right now. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, Bill Owens, as you know that story that when they after that grand jury after after Alex Hunter did what he did. Bill Owens convened a group in his um, at his in his office in the Capitol around a great big table. We had CBI, PD, DAs, FBI, everybody with a badge. And around the table, Bill Owens asked the question: How many people believe Patsy did it? Every hand was in the air. Well, I'm not even sure Patsy did it. Well, I am. <laughs> so, you, well, I mean, I. I I'm very I know. skeptical that an intruder entered that home. There's no intruder. But, um, listen, I mean, it's been 16 years. John Bonet would have been 22, yep. I think, 22 years old yep. today. Um, I think Burke's now 26. Yep. He's an engineer. Yep. Uh, people have moved on. John's remarried. Um, <sighs> well, moving on doesn't mean anything in, in a case like this. John Ramsey. Well, I mean, John's remarried. I mean, Tom I know. Kobe's in the mountains. I know. Mark Beckner's still the chief. Yeah. Um, he's dealing with elk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's. Um, but it, but it was Tom Kobe, not Mark Beckner. Mm. Tom Kobe, as you and I were there when, when he held up the Constitution in that press conference, and you and I looked at each other like, "What in God's name have we just watched?" Yeah, it was pretty bad. Bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, I mean, and and it turned out that the real the the that they were after the media. They weren't after the killers. I mean... Yeah, they were. A lot of them were. A, a lot of them were after the And what the happened to their careers because of that? Well, a lot of them, a lot of them went off, and some of them are still there. Some of them are now chiefs in other yeah. towns. People went to Florida. People quit. I think Jane Harmer's with the DA's office Jane, now. Jane, Jane Harmer. Gossage is still there. I think Tom Trujillo's still yep. there. I'm They're big, all still there. I'm a big fan of, 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 of Harmer. 
I'm a big fan of Trujillo. Uh, there were people uh, we we talked about Thomas. Uh, there were some people that were real heroes. Tom Wickman, another one, but they got pushed aside. Well, those those are some of the ones who were watching Alex when, Hunter when, when he when he uh, came out. He had, I mean, he, I really do believe. I think. I think that the police believed that they had it, and they really worked hard, and that grand jury went for 18 months. And um, it's Alex's decision in the end. And if he, if he knows the law and he, and he believes that there's not enough, then he's the one who gets to say so. And there are, why lot, can't there are we, just why, as many people who disagree with you why can't, agree with you. Why can't we see the evidence that he disagreed with? Better yet. What do you think he disagreed with? I, I, here's what I personally believe. Oh, let me break and come back. We'll take some calls. What I personally believed is he had enough. He couldn't do it anymore. It was. It had gotten away from him. Hmm. It had totally I don't gotten think away so. from him. I, I think you remember he had four or five DAs consulting him. He had people. He had Bob Grant. He had Ritter. He had everybody he in had his mind. He had Peterson. He had everybody. Yeah. And, and every one of those guys shows up in Owens' office, and every one of them said, I would have been indicted. Well, actually, I think Bill Ritter told him, told him, uh, advised him to go for it. That's right. I, don't believe, I believe Bob Grant told him no. I thought Bob Grant told him yes. I thought they all said yeah. Mm, I'm not so I, sure I have to ask about Owens. Bob. I'll, we'll get Owens on the air. Okay. All right, you hang on a second. Hang on, and we'll take calls. Okay. To what will happen next, Carol? I don't think... Um, I don't think Stan Garnett's going to do much. I mean, I think I, you have to remember that this DNA, this male DNA that was mixed with hers in her underwear is, that, that is consistent with the, the DNA that's on the waistband of her leggings is a problem. But if you took... Nobody knows who it belongs to. It does not belong to the Ramses. I know. not belong to 100 people they've tested. It doesn't belong to... Hundreds of thousands of people have been in the prison system. It's a problem. What I'm saying to you, I understand that. But if Lady Justice wears a blindfold and you put all of the evidence that points to John and Patsy as the murderers and you that little that little minutia, and it's not even DNA. It's, it's, I'm told it's like cellular material. It's, it's microscopic. It's, yeah. it's very, very diluted. It could have been in there through a manufacturer, through anything in the world. Those underwear were made in China, if I, understand, if I remember correctly. And if you took all of that and you put everything on this side of the scale and that little bit there that could have come anywhere from when they were man, made in China, who do you think, what, do you, what side of the scale drops? Well, that was Alex Hunter's decision to make. If he would have had the DNA, I think it, it would have been no, even no, no. More but no, but, but a- answer me again. You mean if we went to trial today? Yeah. I think it would take a great prosecutor. I think it would take some some very very solid evidence, some good experts, and I, I think you could take it to trial. I do. What but I'm saying, what, what I'm, uh, but I'm I'm saying that the evidence that they had, even in that vote in '99. But in the vote, they didn't have the DNA. You and mean they, without and, the DNA? And, and they indicted her. I, I would have liked to have seen it go to trial, Peter. Me too. I would have liked to have seen it go to trial. Because I'll tell you what, in an open courtroom, you would have learned so much more. And she would have had to set, sit there. And he would have had to sit there. I don't think she could have done it. I think he might have she done was, it. She I, the, was that, pretty that, strong. I, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. She was only strong in moments uh, that, but who who knows what she was like behind closed doors? Who knows what she was like at night? I'm saying this well, man, this guy, John Ramsey, has ice water in his in his veins. He is. I actually, I actually think the other way around. I, I don't. think she was very, very strong. Don't forget, she was the foreman of of a of a jury there in Boulder. I know. She, but I, I tell you what, when it came to it, she became. I think she was. Border, she becomes, if not crosses over into being borderline sociopathic, that she can actually, although I think they failed so many lie detector tests until they found one they could beat. Well, I'll tell you, there were, there were stories from, from Jaminet's teachers. She was in kindergarten, and some of the things, if they called some of those teachers in and, and we could hear just, you know, some of the human angle of, of this little girl, mm-hmm. uh, there were stories that some days she came to school completely... Um, you know, um, perfect. Yes. 
peppy, clean hair, ready to learn. And then there were days that she would come to school with her hair not and disheveled, combed, yeah, disheveled, uh, yeah. disheveled, yeah. Uh, not fed, mm-hmm. uh, um, kind of. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, no, I like, do. Like, there were there were times she came to school ready for school, and there were times she came to school mm-hmm. when she was not. But there were times that she came to school with her mother, and she had to perform for every single class. Did she? Oh, she had the Christmas things, the Christmas shows. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I think I think we're, there's a lot we we still don't know from some of some of the people who knew the family and uh, that who might have come forward for the grand jury. And maybe there are people who can still talk about this stuff. But people are going to die. This has been 16 years. People were in their 50s and 60s when they were prosecuting this and investigating. No, this. I understand. And it, it's time to get the, get this out there before people die. Well, there's only one guy who's left alive who I think should stand trial, and that's John. But hang on a second. Carol McKinley's with us. Let's go here. We go to Mariah. Mar- we lost Hello? Carol. Hi, Mariah, you're on the air. Thank you. Hi. All right. Thank you. Wanted to wanted to know, do you think it was an act, Patsy Ramsey killed her? It was an accident. They covered it up? Yes, I do. Okay. I think that, um, that she struck her, turned on, <laughs> back up. Yes, I do believe it was an accident. And... Uh, I believe the accident was um, then starts the entire cover-up. And the DA refuses to sign the indictment of Patsy Ramsey, and it should have. I have no idea what Alex Hunter was thinking. Carol, I'm sorry, honey. I, I am not, uh, I, I'm not a high-tech skilled person. We had a phone system here that worked for 25 years, and the brilliant minds brought in a new one that's like... Oh, they did? Oh, uh, yeah. It's just, wow. It's a joke. Anyhow, no, no problem. That's all right. Things go. No you, know, you put somebody on hold, and then you bring in a caller, and <laughs> guy drops off. It doesn't matter. So um, j- we'll say at, at this with a couple more minutes, just between you and I, and then we'll go. You drop off. We'll go into open lines. Okay. How do you how do you think John Ramsey feels this morning to hear that he was a bot? He should have been indicted, or he was going to be indicted. Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, he probably feels like um, he feels probably feels relieved. You know, um, he might be giving Alex Hunter a call to thank him for um, looking at the totality of the evidence. Don't you think? He, don't you think he knew? Um, knew what? That he that they voted. I mean, I think he had all the inside tracks in the world. You, you know, I don't know. I I just don't know. I'm just um, not what what belief is not what you know. Um. Remember, remember, in the, remember in the year two. In the book over there. I mean, Alex had a bunch of people with him. I, I don't know. I, I think they would have looked down on him if he would have made a phone call to Hal Haddon. He didn't have. Early. He didn't have to make that phone call. I mean, well, that's. I don't know. He didn't here, have to. I mean, he didn't have to make that. Phone call. Look, look. I mean, over there in Boulder, they had a lot of very, very good people working on this with that grand jury and with Mike Kane leading up the grand mm-hmm. jury. I can't believe he would have allowed Alex to to open up the, the information lines to um, Hal Haddon's office. I really can't. I mean, well, why, why can't the Ramseys find out with everybody else? They knew. I mean, I, I'm convinced that they had this down, that they had it all the way. Um, I don't, I'm, are you, I'm are you wonder, saying that you think Alex Hunter was making deals with Hal Haddon? No, no, I don't think so. I, I don't think, I, don't, I, I think that Alex Hunter didn't have a clue to what he was really there and what it was all about. In this case, drop. You know, I understand that he now lectures on how to handle big cases to the media. In other words, mm-hmm. he travels mm-hmm. and he's hired to talk about. He blew it. Look, when they brought in Lou Schmidt, what a slap in the face that was to all the Boulder detectives who really did have this thing solved. Why would he bring in Lou Schmidt? Because he needed someone. I remember when he told me he was going to do fresh, it. He needed someone to take take a look at this from the defense perspective, the so fre- that they would know. Oh, uh, so that they would know what was coming. The fresh set of eyes, Lou Schmidt. Yeah. And there, do you think that the Ramseys... A, lot, a yeah. lot of them were mad at him, but a lot of them also respected him. He had a great reputation. And, and when you talk about people who, who've died, Lou, you know, Lou, mm-hmm. God rest his soul, you know, I mean... He, I know. He, he was a good man. He was, he was a good man, and I think he got too caught up in this. Well, story. what a slap in the face it was to all the rank-and-file cops who had really... I mean, I, I know that Linda Arndt, those black and white guys, blew the deal. But even, even in the end, Linda Arndt looked in John Ramsey's eyes and said what? 
did you kill your daughter? I don't know. What did she say? She said, I saw the eyes of a killer, if you remember what oh. she said. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember she said that. Yeah. When they bring in Lou Schmidt, it's like they've worked. Lou Schmidt comes in the case in 97. These guys have been working for a year on that case. And guys like Steve Thomas and guys like the people that you've mentioned, good men who had this thing put together. They had to deal with this unbelievable fool of a Tom Kobe. And then in the end, they go outside the circle and bring in another guy. But it's smart to go out to get someone who's not in the circle, bring someone in with, uh, with, a, with a different perspective and, and have him throw out things that they hadn't and, thought about. And the Ramses I greet, and, a good idea. And the Ramses greet him with open arms and they pray together. Well, I think Lou got too caught up in, in the thing. I mean, he, uh, Mary Lacey was at um, Patsy Ramsey's funeral. Um, I, you know, even Bob Grant said it in, in Charlie Brennan's article that came out yesterday in the Daily mm -hmm. Camera. He said, that, you know, she had no business exonerating no, of course not. the Ramseys. They were still under but, some level. But remember, of I mean, in, in, in my understanding of this, and you don't have to comment, but there's a trifecta on John Mark Carr. It's Mary Lacey, it's Michael Tracy, and I believe Paula Woodward. And I believe those three were the trifecta in introducing the sad, sick, twisted little person, John Mark Carr. I don't know. Well, if you... I, know, I know that Tom Bennett, who was, who was a wonderful, wonderful investigator, and he was the lead investigator with the DA's office, when he saw what was going on with John Mark Carr in May, because I believe the John Mark Carr stuff came out, what, was it more like July? Yeah. In May, he said, if you go after him, we're going to have egg on our face. He knew it. He but but, but they groomed, look, Michael Tracy. So I'm telling you that she had people around her telling her not to do it. Of course not, but much, Michael Tracy and her, she was so convinced that she, ex she was exonerating the Ramses, which she had no business doing. She played that dangerous game. Remember the fish rap and the rest it of those stories? It was a dangerous game. It was a very dangerous game. So then comes this. Yep, it was a, it was a debacle. It was it was John, laughable. Michael it, Tracy it was a waste of money, and it's gonna and it, and it might screw up any any trial if there ever is one down the road. I don't think it would. Michael Tracy grooms just like just like someone who is a pedophile grooming his victim. Michael Tracy grooms John Mark Carr, and I believe he does so with the help of Paula Woodward. When they bring it in, Paula gets Paula knows too much stuff too soon. That, that tells me she's in on it. And they bring her, and that Mary Tracy, and then the same of the people, which is interesting, so many of these guys who go, later go after and, and attempt to destroy, and really, in essence, do destroy, a really, really wonderful guy who had blown the whistle on Ritter and the rest of those guys, Corey Voorhees. And if you remember that lineup, when they're standing up there saying that they had solved the great crime, a lot of those guys were the same guys you see again in the courtroom trying to ruin Corey Voorhees. And they're flying this guy back with champagne and caviar. That was terrible. You know, I mean, we wouldn't have known that except that one of the one of the photographers from one of the networks happened to get on the same flight and got got pictures of him drinking champagne in handcuffs. And and yeah, he, and was pretty he, bad. Uh, it was it was, and it cost the it cost the county a lot of money. And he was groomed by Michael Tracy. Michael Tracy groomed him, as you and know. His, and his knee and his DNA did not match, oh, and they, and they exonerated him. It was horrible. I remember watching Tom Bennett. He, Tom Bennett was on that flight when he huh. was extradited from California because huh. he was flown to L.A. first, John Mark Carl huh. was. And then he was flown here, and Tom Bennett brought him back. And I remember watching Tom Bennett getting off the plane. He still had his um, his rubber gloves on from taking the DNA mm -hmm. swab. Yeah. And they got it in, and right away they knew that he had nothing to, it, it had nothing to do with it from the DNA. But then again, Peter, you have to remember that DNA is going to be a huge problem until you can explain that away. But you need to explain away things like how come that Patsy Ramsey's paintbrush that was hidden away in her paint supplies in a dark basement was like a rabbit warren down there. Those were conveniently found. Okay, there's there's plenty there there's there's enough to build a case in many people's minds. You've got the fibers that were that were of under the, on the underside of the duct tape and right. that were in the garage that were consistent with Patsy Ramsey's red Christmas jacket. That she That's never, that she's huge. wearing the same clothes but at night at the White. Put stock in fiber evidence. Well, now you can explain it away because because all those fibers might have been floating around in the house. But shoulda, coulda, woulda. 
But how, how about point of entry? Where did this person get in? With the spiders, John they, they said he locked the doors. They never came in. Well, that that's the way police look at things. Did someone get in that night? No. Well, and you'll never know. They be, have to ask that question. I, I understand that, and you'll never know because Patsy makes the call. She calls the black and whites. She says, "What what does the what does the note say? The note says, if we so much as, uh, let me. I brought my note in to be uh, da 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 da. Uh, any deviation from my instructions will result in the immediate execution of your daughter. You also execution beheading. Yeah, beheading. Weird. Yeah, the immediate execution. Who writes that? She did. Well, I, you know, Wait, spend, you, just, just, let me we, continue. I advise here, you not. Here's one of the best, one of the best mysteries of the whole case, which right. you're going to laugh at. But I always, I still want to know what is SBTC Save, stand for. Saved by the cross. Maybe. All right, here it is. I advise you not to provoke these people. Speaking to anyone about your situation, police, FBI, etc., will result in your daughter being beheaded. If we catch you talking to a stray dog, she dies. If you alert, she dies. All right. Now, having said that, what's the first thing Patsy does? Calls 911, the black and white pulls up in the drive. We're told in this note they're watching the house. Now. Well, she said she didn't read the note, that she only read the top couple of, ah, of, couple of sentences. Read the note. What do you mean you wouldn't read the note? That's Well, uh, I think the other thing about the note is that it came out of the middle of that of, of, of the pad that was that was her pad. In the in the telephone table, yeah. it, it came it came out of the middle of the pad, but there are like thirteen pages that are missing. How about a, I was going to say how about the, the pad? And I, I think that was really interesting. That stuff went to the hanger in the box. How about that? There was the you could see a practice. There was, they wrote a first note, and then that wasn't good enough. So they, and well, people the don't no, the people, notes. The notes good, but Peter, it's not good in court. Well, linguistics aren't good in court, and well, neither I, and handwriting can be explained away. I wonder how John Bennett feels this morning. Well, I mean, I mean, down I deep know. inside, I mean, there are people that I got to break here. There are people that are so twisted and so bizarre that they could sublet this and push it down in some dark hole. And Patsy Ramsey can, honest to God, maybe go to her grave believing she didn't do it. But this this guy knows. Well, well here's a problem, Peter. And, I, and, and, and if you are on the side of the folks who believe the Ramseys were involved in the murder of their daughter... I don't believe the investigators knew who did what that night, and they needed to know who did what, and they needed that story to present well, to the I'll tell jury. you what, then, then that's why when you never separated them to investigate. Well, no, they should never have done that. Well, now, come on, Carol. I mean, look at, look at how the Thompsons were, were ha handled. And, and, and oh, you're no, going, they, you're, should have taken, they should have taken. They should have never let anybody person. in the house. Nope. But they thought it was a kidnapping. I mean, they, no, even Christmas. if it was a kidnapping, there's clues in the house. You don't let people ruin them. I know it. Hindsight is twenty twenty. No, no, no. That's well. That's police <laughs> procedure, Carol. It has it none is of that. Police procedure. It is police but, procedure. We look. Look what they did to OJ's house. Look what they did to the Thompsons' house. I agree. They should have separated them because they believed they were wealthy white people that had all the power in Boulder, and they laid down for them. That's what happened. If they well, were I'll a couple, what, if they were a couple, I can tell you that the, the first guys who were on the scene that morning had a very, very hard time after this. I mean, they, they still live with it. Yeah, and as they well they should. They, get, they blame themselves. As, I well, mean, as well they one should. One of the first ones in the house went down in the basement and did not open that basement room door. John, John Ram but no, but John Ramsey can see in the dark. There's no, there, there isn't. But I'm just saying, someone should open the door I, at 6 Carol, hang on, hang on. Uh, listen, they're telling me I got a break. How are y'all Okay, that? let's go. But John Ramsey, go. John Ramsey can see in the dark. Peter, if someone opens that door at 6 o'clock in the morning... They, they they maybe couldn't see. Hang on, hang on a second. Hey, Mario, you're on the show. We've got about three minutes to go. Good morning. Uh, Pete? Sir? This, this is interesting to bring all this back up again, but I, do you remember when Alex Hunter said, we know who did this and we're going to get you? Sure. And I think he knew, or at least he had a really good idea, but I think, and also at that same time, uh, Ramsey would not give any information. It was like name, rank, and serial number, that was all he would give. And uh, I think somebody told Alex Hunter, who was a very good guy and everything, I think they said, listen, you charge uh, Ramsey in this, he will pick you apart, cost you millions upon millions of dollars, and maybe not, and you're not going to win the case. And I think he just, he acquiesced at that time based on what uh, prosecutors, you know, do. And, um, that, therefore, it came. It just all unwound from there, mm -hmm. and everybody had speculation of what had gone on. 
What's but, what's uh, in, what makes this so interesting this morning, and we haven't spoken about this for years. What makes this so interesting is that well, now we find out that the grand jury did indeed vote to indict them for the murder of their daughter, and the district attorney turned the other way. Now, uh, there is some speculation that Stan Garnett could reconvene. There's another. There's a woman who's in the piece this morning, a legal expert who believes the Colorado law may have been. Um, not followed, that they, sh- they should have gone ahead and indicted. There's only one of them left, and that's John. It's all about money, Pete, and, and I don't mean in a bad sense. I just mean, you know, they spent a lot of money prosecuting O.J. Simpson, and he walked, you know. Yeah, yeah but that, 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 was, that, that was done by the jury. The jury nullified it. Um, there, there, there was all kinds of issues about O.J., but O.J. is, in many ways, is where he belongs right now. He's in jail. Well, John, yeah, but I mean... The thing is, they always count that money, Pete. They always w- want to know where it's going to go, and it, it mm-hmm. wasn't like a, a bribe. It was more like, man, we're going to spend a billion dollars and lose. Well, but in in the case of, but you saw how the how Boulder handled John Mark Carr. They spent a ton of money, a ton of money, bringing this sad creature back from Bangkok. You were right on on that from the get go. You oh, called sure. it a farce from the start. The and that's where everybody saw that. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's an interesting thing to bring right. it up again. I got to do it, man. We're coming back after the news. Hang on, 630 KHOW Denver's talk station.